Shattered Illusions is a chapter in Bu Modern Day Cairo, Egypt. It revolves around Aya, a 24-year-old woman grappling with a life-altering revelation, alongside her father, Kamal, and her kind-hearted stepmother, Layla. The evening air was thick with the scent of jasmine as Aya sat silently on the balcony of her family home. Her eyes, usually vibrant and full of life, were now dulled by grief. The recent loss of her mother had cast a shadow over her existence. Layla, her stepmother, watched her from the doorway, a mix of concern and helplessness etching her features. Aya, Habibti, you should eat something, Layla said gently, approaching with a tray of food. Aya shook her head. I'm not hungry, Layla. Thank you. Layla set the tray down, sitting beside Aya. I know this is hard. Your mother was a wonderful woman. Aya turned tears glistening in her eyes. It's not just her death, Layla. It's Baba. He's changed. Indeed, Kamal, Aya's father, had grown distant and cold since his wife's passing. Layla had noticed it too, but had hoped it was just his way of coping with grief. Later that evening, as Aya helped Layla clear the dinner table, Kamal walked in, his face like stone. Aya, we need to talk, he said, his voice devoid of warmth. In the living room, the tension was palpable. Aya sat opposite her father, her heart racing. Aya, your mother. Before she died, she told me something. Kamal Stidi, with emotional turmoil, set in arded, avoiding Aya's gaze. She said, You might not be my daughter. Aya felt as if the ground had vanished beneath her. What do you mean? She stammered, disbelief lacing her words. She had doubts. About your paternity. Kamal's voice was cold. Distant. But Baba, how can you believe that? How can you look at me and not see your daughter? Aya's voice cracked with emotion. Kamal stood up, his expression hard. I don't know what to believe, but things have changed. Aya watched, stunned, as her father walked away, leaving her world in shambles. In the days that followed, Aya felt the shift in her home. Kamal spoke little to her, and when he did, it was with a harshness that cut deep. He started to impose more household duties on her, treating her as an outsider. Layla, witnessing this, confronted Kamal one evening. Kamal, why are you doing this to Aya? She's your daughter, your flesh and blood. Kamal's face was a mask of resentment. I don't know that, Layla, and I can't look at her without seeing her, without seeing her mother's betrayal. But she's innocent in all this. She's suffering, Kamal. Can't you see that? Layla's voice was laced with frustration and sorrow. Kamal turned away, his mind a turmoil of doubt and grief. As weeks turned into months, the chasm between Aya and her father grew wider. Aya, once the apple of her father's eye, now felt like a stranger in her own home. Layla did what she could, offering comfort and love. But the pain of rejection from her father was a constant ache in Aya's heart. One evening, as Aya sat in her room, Layla knocked gently. Aya, can I come in? Aya nodded, wiping away her tears. Layla sat beside her on the bed. Aya, I want you to know that I'm here for you no matter what. I may not be your mother, but I care for you as if you were my own. Aya leaned into Layla's embrace, her heart heavy. I just don't understand why he can't see me as his daughter anymore. It's like I'm paying for a sin I never committed. Layla held her tighter, a silent vow to help Aya through this storm. As the night enveloped the city, Aya lay awake, her thoughts a whirlwind of confusion and hurt. She couldn't fathom the turn her life had taken from a beloved daughter to an unwanted burden. The revelation of her paternity hung over her like a dark cloud, and she wondered if the sun would ever shine on her again. In this chapter, the foundation is laid for Aya's journey of self-discovery and resilience. The dynamics of her relationship with her father and stepmother set the stage for the emotional roller coaster that is to unfold in the chapters ahead. In the modestly furnished living room of their Cairo home, Aya swept the floor, her movements mechanical, her thoughts distant. The sound of her father, Kamal, pacing in the adjoining room, was a constant reminder of the tension that now defined their home. Layla, Aya's stepmother, watched her with concern. She finally set aside her sewing and approached Aya. You've been working nonstop, Aya. Let me help, she offered, reaching for the broom. Aya gave a tired smile, relinquishing the broom. It's okay, Layla. I'm almost done. No, it's not okay, Layla said firmly. You've been doing everything around here, it's not fair. It's fine, I don't mind, Aya lied, her eyes betraying her exhaustion. 
Layla sighed, her gaze following Kamal's shadow moving behind the closed door of his study. I'm going to talk to him, Aya. This can't go on. Aya's expression flickered with worry. Please don't. It'll just make things worse. But Layla was resolute. She knocked on Kamal's door and entered without waiting for a response. Kamal looked up, irritation crossing his face. What is it, Layla? It's about Aya. You can't keep treating her like this. It's not right, Layla said, her voice steady but filled with emotion. Kamal stood up, his height towering over Layla. That's none of your concern. It is my concern when I see her suffering every day. Layla's voice rose in frustration. She's your daughter, Kamal. How can you treat her this way? Kamal's face hardened. Maybe she's not my daughter. Did you think of that? Layla's eyes widened in disbelief. So you punish her based on maybe? Kamal, she's innocent in all this. Kamal turned away, his voice cold. The woman I loved lied to me. Who knows what else was a lie? Aya is not a lie, Layla argued passionately. She's a living, breathing person who loves you. She's hurting Kamal. Kamal sighed, a mix of anger and sorrow in his eyes. I can't look at her without seeing her mother's betrayal. You wouldn't understand. Layla stepped closer, her voice softening. But she's a victim too, Kamal. If you have doubts, why not seek the truth? Why not do a paternity test? Kamal's eyes flickered with a conflict of emotions. I don't need a test to tell me what I already know. And what is that? Layla asked, her voice trembling with emotion. That she's not mine, Kamal said bluntly, turning his back to Layla. Layla stood there, stunned, before leaving the room, her heart heavy with unspoken words. Later that evening, Aya sat on the edge of her bed, her fingers tracing the patterns on her bedspread. Layla entered, her expression somber. How did it go? Aya asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Layla sat beside her, taking her hand. He's stubborn, Aya. He's convinced himself of a lie. Tears welled up in Aya's eyes. I don't know what to do, Layla. He's all I have left. You have me, Layla said, embracing her. And I'll stand by you, no matter what. Aya leaned into the hug, her heart aching. But why does he hate me so much? He doesn't hate you, Aya, Layla reassured her. He's just lost in his own grief and anger. In the following days, the atmosphere in the house grew heavier. Aya continued to shoulder the burden of household chores, each task a reminder of her father's rejection. Layla did her best to lighten the load and offer comfort. But the gap between father and daughter seemed insurmountable. Aya's once cheerful demeanor had faded, replaced by a quiet resignation. She went about her days with a forced smile, her spirit dimming under the weight of her father's unspoken accusations. In the stillness of their Cairo home, Layla, Aya's stepmother, paced the living room, a sense of purpose etched on her face. Aya, weary from the day's chores, watched her with curious eyes. Layla, what's wrong? Aya asked, noting the unusual tension in Layla's demeanor. Layla stopped and faced Aya. I've done something, and I'm not sure how you'll feel about it. Aya's brow furrowed in concern. What is it? I arranged for a paternity test, Layla confessed, her voice laced with nervous anticipation. Aya's eyes widened in shock. You did what? Why? Because I couldn't stand seeing you hurt like this. I needed to do something. Layla's voice was firm, yet gentle. And Baba? Aya inquired, a tinge of fear in her voice. He doesn't know. I had it done in secret, Layla admitted, her hands ringing in front of her. How did you even manage that? Aya's voice was a mix of admiration and disbelief. Layla sighed. I had a friend help me. She works in a clinic. We used your medical records. Aya sat down, trying to process the news. So, do we have the results? Layla nodded, pulling out an envelope from her purse. Yes, and they confirm that you are Kamal's daughter. Aya felt a surge of emotions. Relief, anger, sadness. He's been treating me like a stranger based on a lie. Layla sat beside her, wrapping an arm around her shoulders. I know, and I'm sorry, but now we have the truth. Maybe this will change things. Meanwhile, in his study, Kamal sifted through a box of his late wife's belongings. His hands trembled as he uncovered a worn diary. Flipping through the pages, he stumbled upon an entry that made his heart sink. The diary detailed his wife's assault, the confusion over the pregnancy, and her decision to never reveal the truth. It was a story of pain and secrecy, one that had now spilled over into Aya's life. 
Kamal's eyes welled up with tears as he read his wife's words, realizing the magnitude of his mistake. Later that evening, Layla found Kamal sitting in the dark, the diary open on his lap. Kamal, she said softly, I know about the diary. Kamal looked up, his face a picture of grief. I was wrong, Layla, so wrong. It's not too late to make things right, Layla said, her voice hopeful. Kamal shook his head. I don't know if Aya will ever forgive me. She might if you try. She needs her father, Layla encouraged. Kamal stood up, a newfound determination in his eyes. I need to talk to her. I need to apologize. The sun had just begun to set over Cairo, casting a golden hue over the city as Aya sat in her room, lost in thought. The sound of a gentle knock on her door broke her reverie. It was her father, Kamal. Aya, may I come in? Kamal's voice was tentative, a stark contrast to the authoritative tone she had grown accustomed to. She nodded, her heart pounding with a mix of apprehension and curiosity. Kamal entered, holding an old photograph of Aya's mother. He sat down beside her, the photograph trembling in his hands. I need to talk to you about your mother, he began, his voice laden with emotion. Aya braced herself, unsure of what to expect. Your mother's diary. It revealed things I never knew, things she never told me. Kamal's eyes were downcast, filled with regret. Aya's interest peaked, mixed with a sense of dread. What things, Baba? Kamal took a deep breath. She was... she was assaulted, Aya, before you were born. She didn't know if you were mine or... or his. Aya felt as if the ground beneath her had shifted. The revelation hit her like a tidal wave, leaving her speechless. Kamal continued. I didn't believe it at first. I was angry, so angry. But reading her words, feeling her pain, I realized the truth. Tears streamed down Aya's cheeks as she absorbed the weight of her mother's hidden agony. And all this time, you thought I wasn't your daughter. Kamal nodded, his own tears mirroring hers. I was blinded by my pain, my loss. I took it out on you. And for that, I will never forgive myself. Aya felt a tumult of emotions, anger, sadness, empathy. You pushed me away, Baba. You made me feel unwanted. I know, and I'm so sorry. I was wrong, so wrong. Kamal's voice broke, his usual stoicism crumbling. The room was thick with a tense silence as both grappled with the magnitude of the situation. Finally, Aya spoke, her voice barely a whisper. I don't know if I can forgive you, Baba. The hurt is too deep. Kamal reached out, taking her hand. I understand, and I'll wait however long it takes. You are my daughter, Aya, and I love you. Aya pulled her hand away gently, her mind a whirlwind of thoughts. I need space, Baba. I need to figure things out on my own. Kamal stood up, his heart heavy with sorrow. I'll respect your wishes. Just know that I am here, whenever you're ready. After Kamal left, Aya sat alone, the weight of the revelations bearing down on her. She realized she couldn't stay in that house any longer not with the shadows of the past looming over her. The next day, Aya packed her bags, each item she placed in her suitcase a step towards her new life. Layla watched her, a mix of sadness and understanding in her eyes. Where will you go? Layla asked, her voice soft. Aya zipped up her suitcase, her resolve firm. I'm not sure yet, but I need to start over, find my own way. Layla hugged her tightly. You're always welcome here, Aya. Always. Aya hugged her back, grateful for Layla's unwavering support. Thank you for everything, Layla. You've been more of a mother to me than anyone. With her suitcase in hand, Aya took one last look at the home she had known all her life. Stepping out into the bustling streets of Cairo, she felt a sense of liberation mixed with uncertainty. Over the following months, Aya focused on her career, working tirelessly to establish herself. She rented a small apartment, creating a space that was uniquely hers. Her relationship with Kamal remained strained, but she kept in touch with Layla, who provided a comforting presence in her life. As Aya's independence grew, so did her sense of self. She no longer felt defined by her past or the pain her father had caused. She found strength in her resilience, her ability to overcome and forge her own path. One evening, sitting in her apartment, Aya looked out at the city skyline, a sense of peace washing over her. She had found success on her own terms, and though the journey was fraught with pain and conflict, 
It had led her to a place of empowerment and self-fulfillment. In this chapter, Aya's journey takes a pivotal turn as she confronts the painful truths of her past and chooses to carve out her own destiny. Her decision to leave home and build a life of independence underscores her resilience and determination, marking her emergence as a strong, independent woman shaped by her experiences.